Yeah, my name's Fred Negro. Like Neil Hamburger, I don't have to invent a stupid, wacky name. Because <laughs> it's real. And I don't know why I'm doing this. I've never done this before, just standing up here talking shit. Because I don't have any jokes. I wrote a joke when I was about six. There used to be a show called The Magic Circle Club on television. And you, you keep little kids send in their jokes and some big bear or, or a woodpecker or something would read them out. <laughs> and I sent one in, it was, what's pink and floats through walls? Casper the friendly uncooked sausage. It's the only joke, I'm, and they read it out on television. I was a star that week. I wasn't even in primary school yet. <laughs> but that's the only joke I've ever written. That's it, that's all you get. Sorry. Thanks. Oh yeah, where was I? Yeah, grew up in Richmond in a Catholic household. Seven kids. I don't know why. I fucking hate, I can't stand stand up comics. That's what they all do. They go, oh. And they go, what's going on with cheese? You know? What's going on with trams? <laughs> Gives a fuck. What's going on with cheese? What's going on with cancer? But growing up, my dad wanted me to be a taxation consultant. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't become a taxation consultant like the family business, FJ Negro and Sons. <laughs> he wanted me to be taxation. I said, no, I want to be a cartoonist. Because I was a paper boy and I used to read Fred Bassett. <laughs> and still to this day, I still read it. He's never had a joke. I thought, great, because I could only get by on that one joke for so long. <coughs> so when Dad was working at home, he had all these piles of uh, paper, the taxation forms. And he said, study them because you'll be needing to you know, work on them when you get older. So I just used to draw things on the back. And one day, there's about a thousand pieces of forms. And he looked at every one of them, it was like The Shining. It was like cartoons on the back of every one of them, all useless now. He threw them out. Where do you want to be worth now? <coughs> Excuse me. I'm good at this. <coughs> so I came up with a character called Stickman. My black pyro is just Stickman. And then I came up with Blue Man because I found a blue pyro. And then I did The Man With No Head. Use less ink. It's just a stick figure with no head. I did a whole comic about him. He's like a superhero. He had no superheroes. He's just a man with no head. <coughs> and then I did The Man With No Body. He was just a head. And then I did The Man With No Man. It was just blank panels. <laughs> Kids at primary school couldn't understand it. <laughs> anyway, I did become a cartoonist, which is good. <laughs> the worst thing is about being a cartoonist of my ilk is that because I like draw people nude and stuff over the years, all these women who come up to me and say, can you draw me with really big tits? They look at them, they got like two peas on a breadboard. <laughs> a cartoonist, a little fucking plastic surgeon. <laughs> yeah. I've drawn tits on everybody in this town. <laughs> and big dicks. You see, there's no jokes in any of my comics, they're just tits and cocks and twats.
very rare with happy bees. <clears throat> and on Saturday nights when we were kids, mum and dad would take us to the pub and they'd dress us up in our pyjamas first so they'd get us straight into bed when they come home. And just wearing your pyjamas as a little kid. And we'd play up and down the stairs leading up to the uh, publican's office. And in those days you had the, the ladies' lounge, all the mums in there, drinking their pims and champagne, and whatever. And all the dads in the other room, the other bar, watching the footy replay. In Richmond, because it was in Richmond, of course, they all back for Richmond, and I was the only, uh, the only Collingwood supporter in Richmond. Go Pies! <laughs> I was a black and white sheep in the family. You know, it's like an like only gay in the village or something. You know, kids would stand on street corners in their Richmond clobber with rolled up newspapers ready to whack you when you walked around the corner. It's rolled up Herald really hurts. So we'd be in our pyjamas on a Saturday night. I was like the eldest, you know. I was about 42. Ah, that wasn't a joke. No, I was about seven, six, seven. Pretty old. And all the little toddlers were there, the new ones, all the kids. And I'd be the one to go and get the red lemonades and the chips. I'd go to the public bar. Dad, Dad, can I get some red lemonade? Come back. We'd all drink that, we'd eat the chips, and I'd go down into the ladies' lounge. Mum, get some chips. Yeah. Take them back up. All the little kids would be playing with staple guns and in, the, in the publican's office. Sticky tape, taping everything. And they used to have big paintings in the uh, public bar. This is called the Earl of Lincoln, this pub. Big paintings of Richmond players like Royce Hart. They loved Royce Hart. Him going up for a screamer. And that one day, he'd taken two screamers in the game. And they were arguing, my dad and the publican. They were arguing over which mark was better the one in the first quarter or the one in the third quarter. <laughs> and I went down and went into that bar several times to get supplies for the kids. And they were really getting heated over it. Every time I went in, not a fucking third one, it's a fucking better one! My dad was saying, <laughs> publicans going, fucking one! <laughs> this just went on and on, anyway. I'm playing upstairs with the kids and then I went down again. I walked into the public bar and it was fucking empty. Except for the publican who had a raw steak on his eye. Was, that, that, only works. that only happens in fucking Flintstone comics and shit. He said, fuck off little negro, come back when you're 18. Your fucking dad's a cunt. I didn't know. I didn't know what had happened. But apparently, I found out later, my dad hit the publican, they were best friends too, in the eye over who, which mark was better, the one in the first quarter by Royce Hart or the one in the third quarter by Royce Hart. <laughs> he hit him in the eye. And then he said, right, we're all going to the next pub. <laughs> Fuck this pub. And everyone in the pub, in the public bar, went out the front door. True story. And they all walked up to the entrance to the ladies' lounge. They opened the door and said, well, we're going up to the next black and pub. And all the ladies said, yeah, OK. And they all moved out. The entire pub was empty, except for a publican with a steak on his eye. And I gathered all the kids together. I said, we've got to find our parents. In those days, 
every single building in Richmond was a pub. <laughs> every single building served beer. And on the corner, if you had to cross the road, there'd be a bloke with a barrel. He'd give you a traveller, a glass of beer. We'll cross the lights to the next pub. It's true. Richmond was like that. And we walked around in our pyjamas. There's about 20 of us searching every single building, every single pub. We went to Dimmies, that was like three floors and pub. We never found them. <laughs> we grew up. We got older. We outgrew our pyjamas. They had little bits of pyjamas on us. <laughs> we learned you know, to drink beer to survive. You know, we put three kids on top of each other. We'd get a hobo and take his coat. <laughs> stand up. It was hard, but we, we grew up, we grew up mean. We were the pyjama kids. We wandered around Richmond for years until I left and said, I'm going to be a rock and roll star in St Kilda. You going to come? And they said, nah, fuck off. I'm never going to leave Richmond. And they, they adored they, I think they worshipped Roy's heart and just carried on. Years down the track, you know, I'd, I'd go to a pub in Richmond. A lot of them had gone. There was only a few left. So it was like St Kilda. Uh, but, you know, I'd occasionally see an old bloke sitting in a little bar with a really tight, like in a pyjama. It looks like he's never been taken off or washed or anything. Sit there fucking go, fucking God, the Yeah, the, the old bloke at the end of the bar in any good, decent pub. And you go, oh, Mickey! No fucking <laughs> Huh? Anyway, I heard uh, that there's still some of them around, still wandering the streets, still looking for their parents. I remember during one of those periods we were wandering around. Remember the, the skipping girl sign, the uh, big neon sign, Audrey, the skipping girl that used to be up in Burnley Street, down there somewhere. And it disappeared, it was taken down. And we were all scratching our heads, walking around as little kids in pyjamas, going, where the fuck did Audrey go? About 10 years later, Still little kids. And we were always breaking into factories and stuff down by the river. There were nothing, stealing nothing, just breaking in. They had nowhere to go, no home. Just kids in pyjamas, a gang. And we found Audrey in this warehouse down by the river, covered in dust. There's about ten of us. We all stood around. Here's Audrey. Skipping girl, giant skipping girl, just alone in this big warehouse room. What are we going to do? Mm -hmm. Someone said, let's piss on it. <laughs> kids do. We pissed on it. And the neon sign. Audrey, skipping girl, iconic. There's a little trace of pyjama the pyjama gang's piss. Yeah, that's why it's iconic. <laughs> this is unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> then I, I grew up and I moved to St Kilda, became famous for drawing everyone's dick and tits. And I still, like Fred Bassett, have never, ever had a joke in there. But I... 
end up going out with this girl. She's one of those girls that talks a lot during a picture when you go to the pictures. I love going to the pictures. And she always asks questions and stuff. Like one day we were sitting there, we were watching Schindler's List. <laughs> and she said, Are you wanking? <laughs> I think they were, oh fuck, that might be a joke. I'm out of here. Good night. <laughs>